Hello and welcome back to Nat Scraps. My name is Nellie Baconic. I am a maker with Close to My Heart and today we are going to do some creating with some digital files from Life the Hoot and use our Cricut machine to create this cute little card. If you haven't seen the first card that I did in this series, it is a cute dragon card and I'd highly recommend to search that out in the playlist and maybe watch that one first because it is a simpler version of this one and it will help you know where we're going when we create this one. Otherwise, just enjoy. I hope you'll stick around and watch to the end and enjoy this process. Please leave a like, hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think. Let's get into it. So to start creating this card, we're going to start with a clear canvas and import the two images from the digital library from the Life is a Hoot collection and bring them onto a new canvas. You can see there I have the two images. I'm going to start removing the stuff that I don't want from this. So pretty much 90% of this double layer I am taking away. I'm going to keep the flowers and one of the owls and the rest is going. So pretty much the whole right hand page is gone and then you can see me taking away little bits and pieces here. I'll try to do a quick edit there but realise I have to go and take them a little bit um, more slowly. So that is, is going to form the basis of my card, that owl and grouping of flowers and the sentiment hoot hoot hooray. So my next step is I want to have a six by six inch card that I'm going to work on so I'm going to make a guide for that. So here you can see I'm bringing in a square, I've sized it to six by six and that is going to be my space that I'm going to work in. So as I'm moving things around and resizing things, I know you can see I take the guide away while I'm working in that little area and then I'll quite often drag it back over, check that things are going to fit in that area and that I like the way that it's looking. Um, I do eventually take this up into the corner and make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm doing as I am uh, working away here and also um, it's much easier for myself to work when it is a little bit bigger. You'll notice you can bring things to the um, foreground or send them back. So if you're working in um, the Cricut design space and you're um, moving things around, remember that you can send things backwards or bring things forwards so that they're overlapping the way that you would like. And that is um, done. You can do that with a left click, a, a right click, sorry, and the there'll be a little drop down that will come up there. I copied and pasted this fern part so that it was balanced out on both uh, the bottom and the side there and you can see that I'm moving those into place and then I've got one more little flower to fit in. Sometimes it is a struggle to get things to look right and I don't know about you guys but quite often what I do is I get it absolutely perfect the way I want it and then I move something and I have to redo it all over again. So with the magic of YouTube, we're going to fast forward now so you don't have to feel the pain of me moving things minutely for a long period of time. And we're going to go to where I am happy. Now my next step is here, I am going to group this together. I'm then going to take a copy of it. So you'll see me bring it over. So And then I'm going to just use my um, C T R L button and my C and then the B and make a copy of this. Next you're going to see me come down with the mouse down into that very low right hand corner. I'm taking that thing and I'm going to unite that selection. So that has become all one piece and I'm going to need that to make my card base and to um, be able to have it as a stand up. You see that then I move that and make sure that it's centered on that guide, giving the same edge on the left and the right. And then I'm going to take a shape and make a square that is going to go up there that is six inches wide and three inches high. And this will kind of make sense in a second. I know there's a few steps here, but please bear with me. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to go up, I'm, I'm taking the lock button off and you'll see that that is three by six. Once I have that in place, I'm going to remove the guide from underneath that image. I am going to hold the shift key down and select both of those images and then down in the right hand corner, I'm going to hit the slice button. And you'll see here that I will end up with um, a few different sections. The pieces from the top I'm going to delete. The bottom piece I am going to do a copy and paste and then I am going to flip it. To flip the image we you go up to the top toolbar you'll see the little bit that says flip which will come up in a second and we're going to use the bottom one of those. Once we have that image, the top image flipped, we're going to move those over. Now I like to move it right over to the very edge as far as it can go, the second one also, and then I'm going to make sure that those two meet up in the middle there, and I'm gonna take quite some time to make sure that they meet and there's no little gap. Now I have done it once before where there's a little gap there, and when I've cut it on the mat, um, it's in two pieces, which is useless to us because we actually want the two pieces welded together. When they are lined up, we are going to then make those two pieces combined together for the rest of the project. So you see in there that I went down to the bottom corner, hit combine it, and we, then we hit the unite button, which makes it all one piece. Okay, so I'm heading back over to the colored piece at the moment. I'm going to do another copy and then go in and combine and unite that. And that is going to give me a solid piece that we're going to use to build. I promise you this is all going to make sense eventually and um, it will all come together. <laughs> so you can see that that's an exact mirror of the one on top. Now I'm making that one black. The other piece that we're going back to work on now I am doing in a dark grey. I have brought in another shape and I'm, I'm using this square again. Now it's just my personal preference but here I'm using the square because it has nice sharp corners whereas the rectangle has circular corners so you may like that look I don't particularly so I'm making mine a square. I'm resizing that to five and a half inches wide which is the image width and then going to make it three inches high. And we're going to do similar to what I've done before, and that is that we're going to join those two together, just like the two pieces above, making sure that they're overlapped. And you'll see here, I'm going to go in and actually blow the image up to make sure that it is overlapping. You do not want to have it um, separate. You want to make sure that it becomes one piece and not two separate pieces. So. In a moment, I blow this right up to make sure that I am definitely okay. And then I am going to unite that. And for some reason, it doesn't show you. I think I wasn't happy with this first one. That's what it was. I think I wasn't happy with this first one. I do also combine the colors so that they're both a dark gray and then use them to combine. Because I, I had this funny feeling there might have been a line still there when I did it the first time. Putting them together and then going down and using the Unite one more time. It makes that one whole piece there. And that is all of the stuff that I need to do in Design Space apart from cutting. So I've done all the hard design work and now I'll go through the cutting mats. So here you'll see the different cutting mats that um, are there. Some of these pieces only have one or two little bits on them, but we wanna scroll through them and make sure that they're all good. And then when we're happy, we're gonna load them into our clip machine and do all the cutting. And with the magic of YouTube, we're gonna come back and that's all gonna be done. Okay, so I've got the majority of that stuff cut. I'm bringing in a spray box here and I'm going to lay out a lot of the pieces. So I cut um, all the little flowers and bits and pieces. The green leaves are out of two different colours of green, uh, sorry, two different shades of green, like a front and back of the rosemary, I believe. Then I have... Um, 
all the other little flowers. That's the white piece that goes at the front of the owl. We don't want to spray that one. We also don't want to spray the owl's eyes, which are the little white circles that we'll have. And the owl... Um, I did on this one spray the owl front, the um, piece of cardstock front. But on another card that I did, I didn't, and I think that looked nicer myself. The little piece of cardstock with the owl's body is from the new Life is a Hoot range. And I just thought it worked perfectly for some texture on the owl. I'm spraying it with a little bit of the gold gloss spray and a little bit of the white gloss spray. And I'm making sure that I'm getting little bits of splatters as well as the spray on there. And that's just going to add tex texture sorry, to the flowers, to the um, owl, and the bits and pieces that we're adding on to this. You can see that's the little eye pieces, his little feet and the beak, and we didn't spray any of those. I'm leaving the rest of those pieces off in that spray box to dry while I start working on the base. What I am bringing in here is the black shaded bit that we made. I'm going to poke out any of the loose little bits and pieces of cardstock that's in the little holes. You will find that this will happen. All of this black is going to get covered up. So if there's little bits that are slightly imperfect, don't um, panic at all. One of the things, oh, well, there's probably two reasons why I made um, this black piece the way I did was that um, I liked the shade that it gave behind the flowers and things when things were slightly off center. And the other one is it, um, it gives you a foundation to build everything onto so that everything stays where you planned it to go. Once I have put a lovely amount of glue on the back of that, I'm going to line it up with the very bottom of that acetate, which is cut to five and a half inches just as the image is wide. And I'm then going to place that to the side and let that dry while I work on the other piece. This is the folded piece. Well, it's going to be folded very soon. That is what is going to make the um, easel fold on our card. Where those two images joined and we mirrored them, we're going to fold it over there. Match up the writing at the bottom so that it's all um, even on the that bottom section and then using a bone scorer fold that nice and well and score it along where it has joined. Now you can see there's one little bit that's just sitting off to the side then I will just snip that off as it is not needed. Once I have that one nice I am then going to add glue only to the bottom half. Whoops I forgot one step before I go to do that. I am going to go in and trim around this image. Now, I'm not going to fussy cut it. I am just trimming a little border um, as if you'd offset it on the Cricut and had, you know, a quarter of an inch space around. You can see with the glare that's coming off that one, the bit that's left. I'm going to add glue. Now, it's really, really, really important, guys. Only put glue on the bottom half of this image. Don't put it on the top. You can see my hands over the top of that top half of that image and we're only going to go up to that fold line. We're going to match this up nice so that the black is over the top of that grey, the ferns are sitting over the top of each other. You can see here I'm just wiggling it. The acetate does take a little while for that glue to adhere so you get a little bit of wiggle room. You can go and move it up and down and make sure that that is perfect. Now that all of my little pieces are dry, I'm going to bring them out of that splatter box and I'm just going to go around each of those images with some black oxide ink, I think, the black salt oxide ink and a blending tool. And I'm just putting a little bit on the edges of the flowers, um, the leaves you can do but they are a little bit frail, and then um, I'm going to start adhering those down onto the page and building all of the bits and pieces. The centres of the flowers are a little bit fiddly. You'll see here I'm also adding a little bit around that white heart shaped that is going to be the owl's face. 
here I'm just rolling the edge of the flowers and giving those leaves um, petals a little bit of dimension and making it so that they will um, stick up off the card just a little. It's always nice to get that little bit of extra dimension onto the card. So I'm just using my pick up tool here to make that happen and then I'm going to go in and do, um, I'm laughing because that one little petal had somehow got lost in somewhere else. So um, oh, I'm not going to glue the flowers together guys, I'm going to put the little owl together and you'll see here each of the little layers adds something to this owl. So I've layered up his body with his wings, his eyes which are a light blue colour that I made them. Now you can change these to whatever colours you like because they are the digital files, you can do whatever you like with them. Then I'm going to pop the little black dots into the centre. It's really important when you take that lettering off your mat that says hoot hoot hooray that you don't throw away the little black dots. Now don't ask me how I know that because I never would have thrown them away ever in my lifetime. And then we have the little um, gel pen that we just went in for the eyes. Now they are on the cut file but honestly they're too tiny to worry about so I just used a little gel pen and popped two little dots on his eyes. And this owl is just quite adorable, I think. I Let me know what you think of the owls below. Are you an owl lover or are you an owl hater? What do you think about them? Now that we've got the acetate on the front there, I'm going to fold this front bit up and this is now going to make the card shape. So you can see once I've scored this a little bit more, I'll open it up. Now please um, double check that you don't have glue that is drying or sticky still when you're doing this and that you don't end up sticking your card together. Now this is where that black layer really comes into play because now I can add those leaves. I've got a guide as to where they're going. I've got the acetate there that's going to give it a little bit of extra strength but also that black cardstock that is going to give it strength. Now if a piece isn't on perfectly right, it's going to look like a shadow underneath and I, I think that is a really nice look that comes through and another um, reason why using your black oxide ink to just go around and blend around your images helps in the end. You can see here I'm just adding little bits of glue and then adding the shapes above them. This does take a little bit of time, it's sped up of course because I didn't want you to have to sit here for an hour and watch me piece these pieces together. I must have accidentally put those in the wrong spot or I think they may, I may have flipped them over in the box when I sprayed them so they um, didn't quite fit right. So, and these flowers. Now I do go backwards and forwards between doing things on this, trying to give a different elements time to dry with the glue. Uh, if you were doing it at home you could um, pop a couple of pieces on, pop off, do something else, maybe cut some other papers then come back and then do a little bit more and I would really recommend that whereas I'm trying to do this so that it's fluid for um, the video and sometimes that means things don't attach as well as they would if I was doing it a little bit slower. The next step is to attach what would be the card base. So you can see here I'm going to line this up so that it's sitting directly over to the base. I've got an even side uh, gap on the left and the right. I have found that my second piece of cardstock is cut too long so I've gone off and trimmed that to the right size or I think I had the other piece on the side. And I am going to trim this so that it has an even board on border on the sides and the bottom and we will fix up the problem on the top a little bit later on. This is a little bit of foam um, that I'm popping underneath so that this raises up a little bit and has something for the card front to catch a hold of so that it doesn't just flick and lay flat. So I'm going to pop that there and try to get it nice and straight. And here I'm just showing you how the, the card front will sit up and hook into that edge. We will decorate that a little bit more as we go along. Now I'd like the owl to have a little bit of dimension too, so I'm popping a bit of foam tape onto the owl's 
um, top half and a little bit of glue just on his feet where they're going to attach underneath the flower. So I still want to keep those layers so it looks like the flower is sort of in front of his feet but then make his body come up and away from the card front a little bit. Now I'm going to add the wording on here and again because we've got that bit on the base it's just a matter of matching up the layers to what's underneath and I really like the dimension that this gave so um, having the flowers underneath then the hoot hoot hooray actually came up and it, it, it's not like it's got foam tape underneath but it's got that little bit of dimension and I really like the results that I got from that. So this is a little bit boring here guys, sorry, what to say when we have to fill space, I'm not sure. Um, how was your Christmas and New Year's? I hope they were really fantastic. Did you get some good presents? Let me know down below, did you get craft supplies? Did you get, um, what did you get for Christmas? <laughs> so now we've got the Hoot Hoot Array on and I'm looking at that back bit and I've done several different versions of this. I've made one where I didn't put any support in the back and I made others where I felt that it did need a little bit of support at the back. So as I finished this one, I did decide that it needed some support at the back a little bit later. Now this is just a quarter inch strip of white cardstock and I'm just gonna lay that across there and trim it to the right length and you would, you know, you'd be hard pressed for people to say, oh gee, what did you do there? It's um, just attached up and is um, looking like it belongs there. Here I'm just putting another little strip on. So this is the lighter side of that grey cardstock. And that just shows people where the lip is. Otherwise it's not really noticeable that there's that lip that is there. So, so cute. So we are getting really close to finishing. Just a couple of tiny little details to finish it all off. So I'm going to bring in a few of these sequins and I'm going to place them in the middle of the flowers. And this it really is just tiny details. They don't have to be done, but they're just added little extras. While I'm finishing this off, I want to thank you guys for joining me, watching me. Please, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell that will tell you when my videos go up and leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking, what, um, what you like, what you don't like. I, I love your feedback. I really do um, love hearing from each and every one of you that leaves comments below. I have um, a couple of other cards in this series showing uh, some digital cards and how to use them. Um, I have a dragon card and I will be making one with the Are You There Yet collection as well. So I'm off to the side at the moment cutting a very thin piece of the um, glitter tape. I couldn't even remember the name of it for a second that I'm going to add also to that strip that is underneath. Um, and I'm having awful trouble getting that off. <laughs> so once again, thanks guys. And um, I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial. Let me know, was it clear enough to, uh, so that I know in the future, if I need to add more details, if there's something that you um, would have liked to know that I didn't show, or if you want me to slow down some steps or speed them up. Now I, this, I am here doing that little bit at the back and what I do to finish off this last little bit on the back is that I go in and I mark it with a texture just leaving a border as if I was cutting around it and then I'm going to cut inside just inside that black mark that I've made. Now I don't want it to go any higher than the halfway mark that we have so I will stick it there and pop glue on and then um, glue that piece on. Now one thing I will mention that is it will um, dry and you will still be able to see a little bit of that glue in the background. We have it covered on the front side but on this side we don't actually have it covered and you will see the glue um, after it has dried. 
it is on the back of the card so it's not a huge deal that you will be able to see it and here I am just showing you just very very quickly the um, glue on the back I will put up some still shots and I that will be it guys so once again thanks for joining me and we will see you on the next one bye